I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, I don't care how much you work on yourself, there are some times when things aren't going to go right. They just are not going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's Law will be knocking at your door. Why? I don't know why. That's called life. And you have to deal with it. Sometimes your life will be in a slump, just like sports. Some of the best shooters can't hit baskets different times in games. They get in a slump. Do they sit on the sideline and say, you know, I just didn't hit a basket today? No. They continue to execute. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Continue to move. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Repeat after me. Help somebody. And help yourself. Because what you give is what you get. Find somebody that you can help so you can forget about you for a moment. See, sometimes the best thing to do is to be. Sometimes you have to just back up and go within yourself. A bow and arrow, you, you can't take a bow and just push it out an arrow. You just can't push the arrow out. You have to pull it back and then release it. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you are under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic, just like a guard. You know, I loved reading the book called As a Man Think It by James Allen. He uses the analogy of the mind being like a garden. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. Am I right? But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back. And I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. To yes, I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. The next thing that is important is that expect things to get better for you because they are. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay, it has come to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. And maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. I was doing a training at a college. And it was a two-day training during orientation. And in the training that I provide, I'm a motivational speaker, but I conduct processes and personal dynamics. 
where people begin to go through changes that stimulate the right and left hemisphere of the brain, enable them to see themselves differently. I conducted this particular simulation with these young kids, 17 and 18 years of age, so that they would begin to see how they make decisions and how they would survive in this particular simulation process we gave them. We had them to do it individually and then collectively. Over 30% of them wrote down as their first option in order to survive, they would commit suicide. First thing they wrote down. Suicide among young people has increased 300%, over 5,000 will successfully take their lives this year. Why, why did they do that? They, I said, I was so shocked, I said, what do you mean? Well, at least we would not suffer. And then they had the nerve to write down all of the other things they were going to do after they committed suicide. <laughs> I said, listen, Kadumbo. <laughs> no, when you, when you come up with a permanent solution for a temporary problem, that's it. Game's over. <laughs> that's it. You're not going to do anything. Anybody wrote suicide at the top, you can put your pencil down. <laughs> See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. Repeat after me, there's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Shake somebody's hand on your right and left and say, I'm unstoppable. You've got to make those kind of declarations to yourself. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. And if I get knocked down, I'm gonna be like um, Leo Pascal, you said you're gonna have some low moments in life, but when you do, you will have high lows. <laughs> when you work on yourself. What are some of those things that you can do during this period of time? Go for walks, do some things for you. Just go for a stroll so you can engage in some reflective thinking on life, on yourself, looking and enjoying the universe, smelling the roses along the way. Listen to upbeat music, music that inspire you. I have only but goodies. I have strategies that I engage in to recharge my batteries. I'm preparing for that because I know things are going to happen that I cannot anticipate. Very good friend of mine died the other day. I had a program for myself. I have books that I read that inspire me, tapes that I listen to that fire me up because you're gonna have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay there. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why, what's wrong, I don't know. <laughs> Just leave me alone. <laughs> why did that happen? I don't know. It's called life. <laughs> the other thing is take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Someone said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. <laughs> And he said, the people that get along in this life look around for the circumstances that they want and if they can't find them, they make them. They create them. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies and changing your strategy means reinventing your life. Recreating you and you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. You, can, you have the power to make that decision. 
You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. And all of these things that are happening to me right now, they're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. I'm in charge here. Yeah, see, one of the things about life, you're going to get hurt. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to fail your way to success. But you've got to be willing to experiment. You've got to be willing to push yourself. You've got to be willing to challenge yourself by putting yourself in a perpetual state of discomfort. And so the things happen in life. When you have goals and dreams, things happen. I had no idea. Midway of my third term, my mother became ill. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. My brothers and sisters called me and said they're going to put her in a nursing home. And I said, no. They said, we thought you would say that. We've interviewed the best nursing homes in Dade County. I said, I said no. So I had a problem. How can one woman raise seven children who couldn't take care of themselves, but seven grown people couldn't take care of one woman? I had a problem with that. And I said, no. So I resigned from the Ohio legislature and I came back to Miami to take care of mama and took care of her until 89. And there are things as you have your goals, things are going to happen to you that you can't anticipate. Some of you are in the eye of the storm now. Things are going to happen. And don't say, well, why does it have to happen to me? Why not you? Who would you suggest? You want to give us some names or email addresses? That's really what I said the second time I got cancer. <laughs> they had told me that cancer had metastasized in seven areas of my body. I started laughing. He said, why are you laughing? Are you in denial? I said, no, I feel like Mother Teresa. He said, what do you mean? She said, Lord, I know you know how much I can bear. I just wish I, you didn't have so much confidence in me. <laughs> There's times in your life when things are going to happen that you've got to begin to put your dream on hold. And you might have to reinvent yourself. How many have already gone through that? Raise your hands, please. It's called life. And don't tell everybody about it. 80% don't care and 20% glad is you. You have to suck it up and handle it. That's what it's called being in business, being an entrepreneur being a risk taker, walking by faith and not by sight. Stuff happens to you.